Coming up on this episode of the Preston North End Weekend Warm-Up. The Birmingham build-up starts with Paul McKenna and fun and games with Josh Harrop. All that and so much more on the Preston North End Weekend Warm-Up. Hello and a very warm welcome back to the Preston North End Weekend Warm-Up. And we're talking about returns because we're back at Deep Dale. It feels like forever. Heck, we missed you at Cardiff City. We'll probably never mention that match ever again. And we've missed Josh Harrop. He's back. He came off the bench to participate for the first time in a competitive match for North End in more than a year. So, we've invented the weekend warm-up game drum. It might be the only time you ever see it, but we thought, why not? We've also invented a game for him as a little way of having a chitty chatter with Josh Harrop. So come with us into the Preston North End weekend warm-up games room. You're all invited. Hi, welcome to, I mean, you know this is Josh Harrop anyway, so hello, Josh. Hi. You're supposed to say hello, Josh. That's oh, the, what the hello, comedy, Josh. That's what the comedy reply <laughs> would be. And this is the weekend warm-up games room. What do you think? We've uh, we've gone all out for this. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. It's actually, it's the press conference table that we've just turned sideways, but it sort of works. Yeah. So welcome to it. Uh, we've, we've had a think about uh, games to play. Uh, we'll introduce you to that in just a second. Oh, I don't oh, understand Siri, we've had a think about games to play. See, even she's getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that? That was a bit crazy, wasn't it? Let's just... Shh. She'll tell you the answers in just a second. <laughs> that threw the thread of it all just a moment. But before we get the games out and everything, um, Cardiff City, it was more than a year since we'd seen you playing in a Preston shirt. How, I know it was only 10 minutes, but how was How did it feel to get back on the pitch again? Um, yeah, it was great. Great feeling, obviously. That's what I want to be doing. Um, the last four months has obviously been tough, um, been injured um, and stuff like that. So, like I say, to be back on the pitch, there's no better feeling and to be in a Preston shirt, that's what I want to be doing. Clean sheet from everyone here, from the managers saying with you as well, you know, it's, it's the same for everyone. Everyone starts on a relatively level playing field. How do you feel about that? Like I say, um, for me personally, I've just got to get my head down now, show the gaffer everything I can do, um, work as hard as I can on the training pitch, in the gym, do everything I have to and then get in the plans and hopefully push back into the team. How has it been out on the pitch? It's been good. It's been tough, obviously, my legs feeling it a bit because it's been a while, you know, four months not training, but like I say, um, it's good to be back out there and I feel good now. There are good things, obviously, about playing and everything, and then there are bad things about it in terms of where have you just been spending the last five or ten minutes coming in shivering like a snowman? In the ice bath. <laughs> <laughs> I think every day, every day I get in the ice bath now, but now my legs are um, starting to feel a bit better now, you know, got the two weeks under my belt and feel better now so I can kick on. Well, I mean, I know we've all had a cold shower at some point in our lives, some reasons for some and some just because we've maybe forgot to put the uh, emerging heater on before we were going to get in there but an ice bath do you like do you have to build yourself up or are you just used to it now um i think i think you just get used to it there's some players who just won't do them. some players don't do it and that's just the way they are but i um i don't mind it get in there oh, God, yeah, that's why. get in there have that's a nice the, bath recover that's why you've come in the weekend warm-up games room now we've we've had a, a meeting a brains trust if you like Ian, the photographer, who always comes out with all the best sort of ideas, has said, Josh is Jenga. Yep. <laughs> you come up with something better, right? Send your answers on the postcard, please. Hashtag weekend warm up if you like. Here it is, look at that. We've, we've actually, we've had these built, especially just for this. These aren't the ones that, I think it was Lewis, wasn't it? Who, was it Lewis? Yeah, it was Lewis Lee who played them a couple of weeks ago. So here they are, just for you. Wow, do you like Jenga? Yeah, great game. Are we having some rules? Do you, do you want some rules? Do you... Really do touch them before you've heard the rules. You can't take from the top three, is it? Nothing from the top three. There are, on some of the blocks, there's a cheeky question. So if you get a cheeky question, you've got to answer the cheeky question. Do I have to answer the cheeky question as well, or just Josh? What are we saying? Uh, I'll just answer it. Oh, right, no. <laughs> I'm not important to I answer the question. I just didn't fancy reading, no. reading the oh, question. I see. Well, that's fine as well, but you were right on both counts. So off we go then, you go first. If they fall down, there's some sort of punishment. And if there's nothing on the blocks, I get to answer another. If you make. touch it, have you got to take that one? You have now. Oh, 
Right, give me a number between, you see we've got a backup one. This is already turning into absolute carnage here. Hmm. You've got uh, one and 20. Pick, pick a number. 10. 10. What were you like at school? Um, the cheeky one, I'd say. Didn't really take it too serious. Did uh, you enjoy school? What I, school did I you enjoyed, go to? I went to two schools. Um, I went to a school in Stockport and then I moved to Ashland Mersey with United when I was 13. Lived in Diggs from 13 to 17, I think it was. So It's like a boarding school. It was, yeah, it was. It was a big change um, in schools because the one I went to in Stockport was a bit more rough and ready. And then I remember I went to the one in Sale, which was Ashland Mersey, and uh, I was used to just having like a tie like this big, <laughs> shirt on top, um, just like a jacket on instead of like a blazer, and just a black pair of trainers. And I walked in the first day. Trousers, hopefully, as well. Yeah, trousers, trousers, obviously. Yeah, and I walked in the first day into the one in Sale, and. Um, I remember the head teacher was like, because I went in with like my parents and stuff, and I had the uniform on, but how I'd wear it normally. And she was like, you need seven stripes on your tie, you need to tuck your shirt in, and your blazer needs to be on and no jackets inside. And I was like, whoa. I remember going home to my mum, I was like, I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get like, used to this skill. But then I think it was better for me, like educational wise. But I only, I was only into one o'clock and then I trained, so. How did you do? Did you get any, uh... I think I got like 13 GCSEs. 13? Yeah. 1-3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously like, B-Tech Sport you get about 6, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't really know, but, for, I don't right? know if they count, but I got obviously I got my Maths, English and... Is it science? Well, I don't know, you I tell me. So. Yeah, yeah, But just straight science. I'm quite impressed with that. Yeah, I did alright, like I didn't... Got. Got, got through it. Right. Yeah. And always had seven stripes on your tie. Yeah. <laughs> Big change. Right. <laughs> Off you go. Your go. Is there a question? No question. Are you picking a number again then? Yeah, yeah. Let's go on then. Seven. What is your best childhood memory? My best childhood memory? Hmm. I'm going to take one of these out while you ever think about it as well. With one hand. My best childhood memory? Yeah. Well, my childhood memory is what I'd do on an average day Yeah. my childhood would finish school, I'd get home, and literally every day I would get changed and go straight to the park, knock, and my house was like literally, everybody's house was on the way to the park, so I'd <laughs> knock on everyone's house, a lot of mums would just be like, they're not in, when I knew, <laughs> when I knew they were in. We'd have seen them literally, in yeah. Let me out, George! And then we'd go on to, um, there was Woodlands Park in Stockport and Woodbank Park in Stockport and they had um, like a new five-a-side football pitch there and like literally every day, even before training, so I'd be there to like from three, straight from three after school to about five and then I'd go to training and then like it'd just be on repeat every day. Like, that's what we're doing, we play like manhunt and stuff through the woods. Manhunt, what a game what that a was. Game. Yeah, yeah, like that, that was me every day just in Stockport playing footy on the park and then playing a bit of manhunt. When you were playing footy, were you pretending to be someone? Um, like if you had a... We used to just play... Um, <coughs> what was the game of choice? Three and in? Longest. Beat, long, longest. Longest. It was longest, so it was like a... It was like a gated, like, almost five-a-side pitch. Right. And it was just two nets either side, but it was gated, so when you shot, you get the rebounds. It was longest, you're not allowed over the halfway line. And wow. That's why we play it for like hours, every day. That was... So you can only shoot from inside your own half? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, but it's only like a five-a-side pitch. Half? No, no, no. But, when someone shoots, obviously you've only got two touch, so if it hits the back, you've got to try and get your touch before the halfway line. How Take many, how many uh, goals have you scored like in professional football from long, long range? Oh, God, I don't know. I don't know. A few? Probably a few, yeah, but yeah, that's all, that's all I used to do. So, so, so people should play longies then. Longies, the way Josh Harrop, I think every kid plays longies on the back. I've never even heard of have it. Have you not? No. For us, it was like, it was three and in, Kirby maybe, if you were sort of around Kirby, there. yeah, play Kirby. Yeah, 60 seconds. Yeah, Kirby when I was a bit younger, he used to play Kirby, just on my road, when I was only allowed to light the lamppost. You know, like, my mum was like, God, oh, don't go past the lamppost. <laughs> like, me and my sister just play Kirby outside the house. Yeah.
We have got, if you can handle any more of that, more from Josh between now and the end of the show. Let's start getting into the next match of Birmingham City. And you may remember again that Paul McKenna was involved in, probably a couple of games that Paul McKenna was involved in against Birmingham City. He's coming up shortly, but let's hear first of all from manager Ryan Lowe and striker Chad Evans. Really excited about it, you know, can't wait. I'm excited every time we, we walk out as the person or their manager to represent this football club and represent my team and, and get them playing the style of play we want. Uh, Saturday's going to be no different, albeit there's going to be hopefully a lot more fans there to see, to see it. And it's up to, to me and the staff and the players to, to put a game plan together that they can be excited about. I feel like the schedule's been a bit uh, mental um, in regard to like COVID and, and games and postponements. Um, feels like we've not been had a chance to get into the swing of it, like training game, training game. It's uh, it's been a bit broken, <clears throat> but two wins on the bounce is obviously it's probably is it the first time we've done it this season. Um, lads are lads are buzzing, um, and we build on that and, and keep going and like I say get a bit of momentum um, without any interruptions will be will be nice. Yeah, listen, it doesn't matter form in this championship, does it? You, you know yourself, anyone can beat anyone. We're not definitely not going to disrespect Birmingham City and Leeds teams because we know what they're capable of doing. They've got some fantastic quality players in there. Uh, yet yeah, they might be a little bit in different run of... <clears throat> they probably want more points on the board and want to be winning more games. We'll certainly respect them. But as I've said loads of times, we just can't fear anyone. We've got to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We'll worry about what we have to do, but we'll pay Birmingham City the, the massive respect they deserve because... As I said, anyone in this division can beat anyone. Again, like the, the championship such a mad league. You, you can you can play teams in form and out of form. And I think every single game in the championships a really tough game, no matter who you play. Um, and there is quality players in the championship who can turn games around on the day. So I think for us, we go into it the same. We're going to approach every game, and that, that's about us and how we will win the game and applying ourselves right. And I think we'll do. If we do that, we'll, uh, we'll be fine. Right, let's hear from Paul McKenna now. And before we get there, let's remind you about that night against that team and that penalty. Cue Peter Drury. But Paul McKenna steps forward for arguably the most important kick of a Preston football for just about half a century. McKenna to take them to the final. Proud Preston march on breathtakingly, breathlessly on an evening that Deepdale will never, ever forget. I mean, it was some night at Deepdale, that wasn't it? It was uh, never to be forgotten from a fan's point of view. What was it like from your point of view, stepping up and then scoring that penalty? Um, obviously afterwards it was fantastic elation and that but at the time it was I still say it now it's the most pressure I've ever been in in my entire life you know I was still probably I think I was 21 maybe 22 I don't know but um, you're still trying to make your, your name in the game kind of thing and um, we'd practised them all week under Moisey you know as we know he was no stone unturned and he uh, we, we'd went through them all and he made us one thing that really stuck in my mind was we, we, one we knew who the penalty takers were but also we, we practiced them every day and, and you had to hit the same penalty you had to practice the same penalty so when we went up you didn't mind if you went and, and you struck your penalty and the keeper saved it or maybe but if I had gone up and hit it a different way to what we'd practiced in training then you'd have had something to say so I think one it, it, it took any area of doubt of what, what when you was going up there to take that penalty you, you knew exactly what you were going to do and you knew if you executed right you'd score so it took all that element of doubt out of it which I thought was you know genius by him really to be honest and I think if uh, I, I'm surprised other managers don't take a leaf out of his book in that you know so I, I went up there as much as it was nerve-wracking I knew it, if I struck the ball well I knew where it was going all the lads who were stood there with me knew where my penalty was going as I knew where everybody else's was going but uh yeah, on the night, fortunately, it went in for me. I ate it well and the keeper guessed the right way and just got a fingertip to it. But because I made a good connection on it, it went in. And I was just, 
I was just relieved more than anything. It wasn't joy. I think, as I say, I was just uh, relieved that I hadn't let anyone down. You know, just before the penalties were taken and they're deciding which end they're going to go at, and then obviously Trevor Francis yeah. has his has his moment, as it were. Yeah. Did you know all that was going on? What did it make any difference to you? Like, uh, no, it felt no. I think I think the only piece, if anything, you feel like you're. Uh, you know, it, it's only, it was only going to play into our ham, wasn't it? He was he was obviously disgruntled. Uh, but you shouldn't be taking penalties at an end where there's no fans. You know, the fans pay to, to to pay good money to be at them games, and it was a big situation. And it would have been uh, criminal had, had the penalties been took at that end. So uh, the referee was quite right to 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 you know overrule him. And um, yeah, it, it probably played into our hands that he was disgruntled. The last ever goal you scored for North End was against Birmingham City as well. I seem to remember it was it was decent. And then obviously Ross scores another one, takes his shirt off and gets sent off, which he had previous four anyway, and he knows he's an idiot for that one. But uh, how hard was it when you it came? In fact, Sheffield United, who's next, was your last ever game, obviously, as well, wasn't it? So how hard was it when it came to after 400 and odd games for North End to, to move on? It was, it was tough, you know. I've, I've told this before to people, uh, you know, my mum when she was alive she was she she I think she never missed a game for five years home and away Portsmouth away on a Tuesday night she was all everywhere you know she absolutely loved it and she had all the threats she used to run the the coaches you know all the all the bingo on there and all sorts you know you get these these bent nosed hooligans with the Stone <laughs> Island gear on coming up to me out of the game saying your mum was a legend you know what I mean and uh, it was the same when I went to Forest uh, she just had that about her so she absolutely loved me playing for Preston I had two young children at home and my, my wife, you know, um, I think my youngest was only about four months old when I left. So she knew that I was going to be away a lot. And the day that the um, the deal was done and it, and it was agreed, I had both my mum and missus in the in the kitchen crying their eyes out. They were they were gutted. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't um, it wasn't an easy decision. Uh, I could have stayed there all my career and, you know, and but I just felt that I think I think. The, the final nail in the coffin was, I think, that, that summer, um, I saw Graham Alexander get promoted with Burnley. And I'd seen so many lads who I'd played with and felt I was as good as, and, you know, on that par, it had gone and had the chance in the Premier League. And I, when we got beat in the playoffs at Sheffield United, I just thought, I, I'm never going to get this opportunity at Preston and I need to go further afield. Uh, we were always up there and, and, and I'd had 14, uh, I'd had 10 good years in the Championship at Preston and we were knocking on the door. I think we'd been in the playoffs four or five times and finished seventh a couple of times. So, you know, we was right up there, but I, I just I just couldn't, uh, I just didn't feel like I was going to get the opportunity and that was my, my reason for going. I wanted a chance to play in the Premier League. It, it never happened, but, you know, we was once again at Forest. I just felt they were, they were a team that was spending money. It was a big club. They had ambition. And, and when they came in for me, um, that was where I wanted to go. So in terms of moving on, obviously, not just in football terms, but since finishing football, we can hear that you're on a building site now. You, you're doing that now for a living as well. So how's that? And obviously, you're doing co-commentaries for I follow p and e as well. So how's, how's both those roles going? Very different from football in terms of what you're doing today. Yeah, it's it is. Um, I, I, you know, when I finished, I did all my coaching badges, and that was um, that was kind of if if I ever needed it, and 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 maybe I should have gone into the game, but I made a conscious decision. Me and my wife, I got two kid, young kids, and it was if I was going to go into management, I knew I'd have to go hundred percent into it, like I've done with everything in my life, and um, that would probably involve working away, uh, living away from home. So it was a case of do I pursue that career? Or do I try and get something a bit more stable and, and be a dad to my kids? And, and that was the decision we came up. And then I went down the uh, I went down the joinery route, and I'm a joiner now, and, and a builder, and buy and sell houses. And and to, you know, I've had I've had other lads in the past who, who've come up to me who, who went into the game, but they're in and out of jobs. They're unemployed for six months, and this you only have a four or five games away from the sack. It's, it's a very fickle business. And um, yeah, there's, there's part of me I would love to see what I could have done in the game, but also, there's a lot to be said for stability and, and being at home uh, with the kids. And you get to come to North End as well in terms of the other role that you yeah. do these days. Yeah, well, what... it's nice to, you know, keep, you know, keep your foot in the door, as it were, and, and being around it. I didn't particularly enjoy it. I, I, I was doing a lot of games, but obviously when there was the, um, 
when there was COVID and I was coming doing the games a lot then, it, it was, I didn't enjoy it. You couldn't even get a brew and there was no fans and it was just lifeless, soulless. And I think it, it highlighted how much the fans mean to the game, you know, that they are the game. Um, and so I, I kind of, I was busy with work. So I kind of took my foot off the gas in that and, and started letting a few other lads do them. And um, I, I probably do one a month now or, you know, a couple of months maybe tops, but um no, it's nice to come and see the crowds back in and, um, you know, and, and see Preston kind of steering the way into a, a better position. I was going to say that then, just a couple, just finally. Obviously, this is, it's only his second home game in charge for Ryan Lowe. Uh, the FA Cup defeat, the win at Barnsley, and then obviously the first game that, that we had. Where where are we now? We're at the halfway point in the league. What should we be thinking in terms of Ryan Lowe and what he could possibly do between now and the the final end of the season? It, it, they'd have to go on an unbelievable run, you know, to, to, to challenge those playoffs. I think, I think this year, with all the, with what's gone on, the turmoil, there's been a, a, quite a big change around the players and uh, obviously with the sacking of the manager, who was kind of only in the short term, wasn't he? Um, he, hadn't, he? He wasn't like, he was a kind of a replacement for the last one and I don't think many people saw him as a long-term standing. So there's been a, quite a bit of turmoil as far as Preston are concerned because they have quite a lot of longevity as regards managers and um, and players as well, you know, that, so there's been a, a lot of ups and downs and I, I think they just stay in the league this year and then I, I think he'll, he'll want a fresh start probably. He's got his own ideas with him and his squad and uh, it probably get on the training pitch and, and have five, six good weeks pre-season and, and get some people in and some people out. Who, yeah, and then it, it starts moulding a, a squad that are his, you know, not not just what he's inherited. So um, I think this year, stay in the league, which I think they should do comfortably. Listen, not writing off a, a, a playoff position, but uh, they'd have to go on some run now. As we know, there's a lot of strong teams at the top of that league. But um, yeah, I, I think hand on heart, that's where the club are probably at at the minute. I'll let you get back to your graft. No, no problem. See you soon. Hold, hold that cell. See you soon, mate. And just a reminder that Paul McKenna is in the commentary box on Tuesday for the Sheffield United game. Tickets are still on sale if you want to come along or if you can come along to Deepdale. If not, you can follow the match on I follow P N E. Right, let's. I know you've been waiting for it. I know you've been waiting for it. Let's get back into part two of Josh's Jenga Jenga with Josh. Whatever you want to say it, let's head across to the weekend warm up games room. Messi or Ronaldo? Depends what you're doing, doesn't it? I've had, I've had this debate with so many people. I personally am Ronaldo. Uh -huh. But I think Messi is probably more naturally gifted. But then if you look at Ronaldo, what he's done with his ability, then I think he's sort of like grafted and done everything he possibly could to get where he is. And I think that just makes me pick him over. He's tested team. himself as well, hasn't he? He's been to... That's what people. I mean, he's played, he's played... Would have been really easy yeah, to have stayed at Manchester United, but he went to prove himself. Yeah, and he did. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Singing, are you? No. Can I use two arms? Well, you just have. Uh, this is just making up as you go along. You're not even singing a song. Dogs or cats? Oh, well, there's only one answer to that, and if you give the wrong answer, you're getting kicked out. It's a tough one for me, this, because I had a cat. Yeah. What was the cat called? Wolf. Right. Why was it called Wolf? It's the first name I thought of. Okay. Called it Wolf. Um, but that died. Um, yeah, so then I've actually got a dog now. Right. Yeah. So I don't really know which one. What's the dog called? Uh, Johnny. Johnny? Just like normal names. <laughs> it's not a normal <laughs> name for a dog. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, All right, Johnny. It's a, it's a strange one because I've had... Did you I go had, for a drink down the pub with Johnny? I had my cat longer than I had, I've had my dog. Right. So I don't actually know which one I prefer right now. Right. But my mum's always had cats, so I've always grew up with cats. Right. My missus really likes dogs. So we got a dog and it was like a big decision. I was like, getting a dog like I'm a cat person. But I have to say I'm a dog person now because I've got a dog. Gotta stay loyal to my dog. <laughs> I love the fact 
fact that you really think about the answers to these questions. Oh, it was questions. a tough, it was we a know tough decision. Willy -nilly, you know? We want proper answers, and to be fair on that one, we'll let you off the song thing because, yeah. of, because of that. Well, that's, that's a nice answer. The, answer. the right answer is dog. Who's the most vain in the squad? So who, like, is proper in the mirror all the time? Um, looking tidy. I, I would say he's Shawnee, but he's not vain. He just likes to groom himself quite a lot. Like, he, the slick back that hair. That hair must take that's, so that's long. That's what it is, it's just the hair, like, he's always... In my mind, he's got, you know, on uh, hair dryers, mm. that have got that big attachment on the end that nobody yeah. really knows what it does. Yeah, I bet he's got that, that and he knows how to do it. Well, he hair dryers every day. Um, he has it, like... Slip back, but he's not—he's not vain. Like he don't like look at look in the mirror all the time. It's just with his hair, it takes like a good, a good ten minutes. Right, fifteen minutes. Does he bring hair. his own hair dryer? No, there's a hair dryer in there. Is but there? It's got all his products, and he likes his sprays and stuff. So, right. yeah. Sure. I like that though. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, I. Really he's got a good. A lot to be fair, he's got a good head of hair. He's got he a good. Has, he's got a great got, head on. Yeah. His hair. Do you know what I'm just thinking? You know, when normally when you play this, you put them on the top, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do, you do. But, um, but so we're running out of actual genuine ones we can take out, which is possibly a good thing. But the fact that you're still here is very good. It's blank again, so I would probably come into a conclusion on this. So should we say, should we say that this is the final question? Yeah. Yeah. So come on then, give us a number. Eleven. Eleven. Well, we're finishing then on your favourite t Do you watch TV? Much TV? Are you a... Netflix. Right, I want your... I want your favourite TV show. My favourite TV show... My favourite Netflix series I've watched is Prison Break, to date. That was just my first one I ever watched, that's probably my favourite. TV show. Do you binge watch it or binge do you yeah, just it. sit down there and then... Yeah, well, I did. I remember I was like excited to get home to watch that one, like, <laughs> buzzing. You know, it, like, it gets to a certain time at night and you think, ah, it ends on a point, you think, I've got to watch another one here. But you don't really want to, you want to go to bed, you think, ah, I'm going to have to watch this one. That's, that's, that's what Prison Break did to me. Right. But oh, there's been so many series, I just binge watch a lot of series. So are you saying Prison Break is the one? Prison Break is my, my favourite all time. What's your yeah. snack? Would you have a snack when you watch? You know, you're, you're, you'd be fruit, obviously, with you being a healthy freshman. Yeah. Sport fruit, person. cereal. So what cereal are you having? Sultana brand. So, <laughs> it's not very exciting, is it? Sultana bran, are you putting any liquid on that? It sounds milk. like it would be really dry. Just milk. Like, I bet you have oat milk or something. No, or no, I actually have normal milk. Nut I milk. tried, I tried all them different milks, but just normal milk. Not for you. Right, well that was fascinating. We've learnt lots about you there. <laughs> well, you, well, I'm sure people, people loved uh, finding out all that sort of stuff. Uh, thanks very much and uh, good luck Thank you. and stuff. And then uh, hopefully we'll see you in the first team on a more regular basis. Hopefully. Don't be a stranger. I won't. Cheers. <laughs> oh. And that's it for this episode of the Weekend Warm-Up. Just a reminder about Birmingham City. The Fan Zone is open. If you don't know where it is by now, corner of the town end and the Sir Tom Finney stand. There are a drink, food, games for the kids to play, music. Thought, don't forget it's open afterwards as well when we went to come out and celebrate a win against Birmingham City. If you are coming along to the game as well, don't forget this is the first one where the government requires us to prove COVID certification to get in the ground. That either means your COVID passport or proof of a negative test. If you want more details, peony.com, click on the ticket tab and you can follow the links from there exactly what to do. If you can't join us at Deepdale, that's fine too. We do miss you, but you don't need to miss us. You can listen on I follow P N E. And I think that's about everything. Please like and subscribe. It always helps. Leave a comment if you like, but not a naughty one. And we'll see you next time on the weekend warm up. And until then, come on you whites.
I'm not doing it here. You're going to have to move everything. Come on, Trev. You, you tell them. Move everything. Move everything. Over there.